Ahoy hoy folks! Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name's Sean, aka Uncle Frogface, and welcome to the video. So welcome back everyone. Uh, I'm glad that you can be here for the second part of the November 2020 Scrawler Box video. So last time we did an unboxing, and this time we're going to be using the supplies from that box to create something. So without further ado, let's change camera angles, I'll roll up my sleeves and let's get cracking. So these are the supplies that we got in the box with our lovely uh, scrawler box sticker here. Uh, put that aside. So first thing I want to do is have a look at the menu because as well as listing all of the items that come in the box, we have our scrawler challenge, which this month is liquid landscape. Uh, and the idea is that you use just the items that are in the box to create a piece of art using this prompt. So here I am, I'm using the pencil first, I've got it nice and sharp, uh, and I'm gonna go in with a very light sketch. Now because this is water soluble, I don't want the, the kind of pigment from the pencil to bleed into the rest of the picture, so I'm doing it very lightly. And my idea for this piece was, um, well, basically, I'd, I've been watching uh, on Netflix The Haunting of Bly Manor, and a lot of that is based around water and liquid uh, and the actual building itself, which isn't real. I found out afterwards it's a computer composite. is is gorgeous, so I just wanted to do um, a little landscape study of Bly Manor. Uh, as I said in the unboxing, the kind of desaturated nature of the colours with the graphite in them lends itself quite nice to horror and slightly darker, uh, more morose subjects. So I thought that fit quite nicely. Although actually, a lot of people were saying that The Haunting of Bly Manor wasn't as good as The Haunting of Hill House, that it wasn't as scary. And yeah, I agree it wasn't as scary, but I don't think that made it uh, any less watchable than, than The Haunting of Hill House. Uh, it was a really, really compelling story. It showed that uh, actually just because something's a ghost story doesn't mean it has to be full of jump scares and, and gore. It can actually be a beautiful story just with a supernatural twist. Um, so that really spoke to me as a, an author and a horror fan and, and just general Netflix fan. Um, so this is kind of my homage to that. So you can see I've gone in very, very lightly. I do have a reference picture on the computer and I'm just doing a basic sketch out of the proportions of the house and then starting to block in some of the landscape. The house has this lovely driveway leading up to it which is lined with ferns so i wanted to get that in it's a really really nice uh, perspective piece so there's a just little marks of where the ferns are going to go just coming to the end of this now I'm just uh, fiddling now and okay so here we have the paints and I actually did this in three passes so I did my sketch and then my first paint layer and then I let the whole thing dry and came in with a, a second paint layer for more details and then once that was dry I came in again with the pencil just to put in a uh, final few polishing touches so because I had to use the um, materials that came in the box, I wanted to do a, a wash on the sky in this kind of slate grey tone. Um, and doing a wash with such a tiny brush was not easy. And it's a shame actually, because I've got a really nice set of, of travel watercolour brushes that would have been perfect for this. Uh, but no, I'm sticking to the rules and uh, just getting in as many loose colours as I can. I uh, really wasn't happy that the the, the lid of the pen, the lid of the, the uh, 
paintbrush doesn't post very well so I'm using the red and the yellow here to mix a, a kind of reddish brick color and you'll notice I'm not painting the whole house in this color I'm actually just doing a few sections because I want to vary the hues in, in the different parts so they've got a color relationship but they're all slightly different so some of them I'm really washing out some of them I'm, I'm going in quite pigmented uh, and once I get some of it in I then add a bit more red and that's just to change the hue up a little bit obviously the roof is very very red so I come in mostly with red for that and I'm just blocking in all of those parts here So you can see even with the roof I'm just varying up the tones a little bit just to separate out each part of the roof. So the house also has this kind of uh, parapet area with these arched windows which is more of a, a grey tone, it's like a, an old section of castle that's part of the house and this bay window as well so I'm just using a, again that's a slate grey mixed in with a little bit of the red and around the door there. And this was actually a lot of fun. The, the house is covered in greenery, uh, in ivy, uh, in different sections of it. So I'm just going in, uh, not washing out the colour at all. It's, it's just really heavily pigmented and going over with the ivy. So one thing I really enjoyed about these graphitint paints is that um, when I've used watercolour in the past and I've tried to layer one colour over another, they just bleed terribly but these once the first color is dried a little bit or completely uh, it would be even better once it's dried a little bit they just don't really bleed into each other and you can get some really nice small details so I've laid in the first layer of greenery and now I'm mixing a bit more of that gray and a bit of the darker green into there and I'm just adding a few shadows to the greenery uh, just to separate that out as well and show that it's on different sections of the house. So now with most of the base colours for the house blocked in, I'm going to go in and start blocking out some of the the rest of the colours on the landscape, so the grass areas and the pathway and the, the topiary uh, and all of that stuff.
This is quite an interesting paint for me because I've not used watercolours for quite a long time and these don't behave exactly like watercolours, they're a little bit different. So I'm trying to remember how to paint with watercolours first of all, but then learning about these new paints at the same time. It was, it was quite interesting. I think I'll definitely be using these a lot more in the future. Maybe mixing them with my other watercolours or maybe some gouache. Just see how they work together. One other interesting thing I did find out is that the pencil, if you just sketch very lightly with it and then uh, if you haven't activated it with water at all, it, you can actually erase it almost completely. Which is quite nice, even if you're doing like an under sketch you could go in a bit heavier and then knock it back with an eraser. So these are the uh, the hedges that circle the gardens just at the front of the house. Just trying to get some variation in the, in the greens there. I'd be really interested if any of you have watched the Haunting of Bly Manor, what your thoughts are. Uh, I mean, as I said, I really enjoyed it, but I know some people didn't. So feel free to leave a comment down below telling me what you thought about it. Also tell me what you think about this way of doing the scroller box videos as well. So, so having one with the unboxing and then another actually using the supplies. I, I quite liked it. it. It gave me a little bit more time to be able to do this piece. Actually I, I did it over two days so I started this last night, quite late last night because I knew I was going to let it dry between sections and then this morning I, I finished it off. I've added a you can see that I've just added a bit of that orange into the trees in the background to give it a bit more of an autumn feel. But it worked quite well for me in, in terms of getting the videos made, so I'd like to hear what you, love to hear what you think about the, uh, the actual quality of the videos. Okay, there's those, those toperies. Toperies are like... Um, you know, power lines in a picture, there's a really good perspective tool. I'm trying to add some of the shadow already, but I do come back later and really work on those. Obviously the closer something is to you in a painting, the more detailed you want it to be. Trying to, to play around a little bit more with shadows. Trying to add a little bit of texture. I think it, it works much better when you leave it to completely dry and then then come back to it. Uh, you'll see what I mean when we go on to the next section. Also able to add a bit of uh, hue variation as well there, adding some cooler tones to the shadows. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit there. I'm just adding a little bit of very pale blue to the windows just so that they're not paper white and there's a little bit of colour on them. Obviously as close to the, the sky colour as, as I can because that's uh, what the window is reflecting. And putting a little bit of colour in this doorway. I'm just building up some texture. Let's 
just me fiddling when I should be leaving it alone. There we go, so this is now the next day, so this morning it's all dry and I'm coming in and adding in some of the shadows. So like I said, you can overlay these paints quite nicely without them really mixing or disturbing the paint underneath, which is something that's a little bit more difficult with watercolours. So this, this is not the aubergine, I think this is the indigo colour and I think I'll come in with the aubergine later, but this is in the blue spectrum so it gives a nice coolness to the shadows. I'm just coming in, kind of giving the indication of, of some leaves in the back of these uh, toperies. And now I'm starting to build up a little bit more definition in the picture. You see, the closer that they get to the house, or the further away from the viewer, the less detail there is there. You can really water these paints down as well, and they still don't really reactivate the paint underneath too badly. So I'm able to add some some nice shadows to these topiaries as well without losing detail of well detail the very loose detail of the the dirt underneath the plants and again some more shadows back here Give the illusion of some distant trees and shadows in the background. And now we're back to the house itself. So I'm going in, I'm trying to add shadows to all of the kind of recessed areas. Anything that's overhung by a bit of roof, so in the eaves and, and places like that. Just to give a little bit more three dimensionality to the piece. Also gives a little bit more detail to that. Uh, ivy that's growing on the building as well. I'm able to pick out some details that might have otherwise been lost. is that aubergine colour, so the more, more purple colour, it's a little bit darker as well, I really enjoyed this. And again, going back, layering up, adding tiny bits of detail to the very back of these toperies. I'm trying to darken up that doorway, I've, I've done it about three times now, but uh, I've eventually come back with the, the pencil in the final pass and, and really defined that. And again, just adding a little bit more detail to these back areas, very loose, because it's obviously very distant, so it needs hardly any detail at all. Deepening those shadows there. Some more, some more of the deeper shadows on the house. Also, just adding a little bit to the roof as well, again, just to give some variation. It's not all of the roof tiles are going to be exactly the same colour, so it just breaks up that big swathe of colour. So I realised that the sky was a little bit too blue so I've gone in with, I think this is just the graphite with a little bit of the indigo uh, and I'm just darkening it up a little bit. Obviously ghost stories are a little bit more sombre so I'm just bringing a little bit of that to the sky. And 
and then the same as we did with the roof just breaking up the grass a little bit so it's not just a, a blanket of a single color giving it a little bit of variation pushing back that background a little bit with a little bit of the gray and then once that's all dry I'm just coming in with the pencil at the end just adding some very very small details so you know the window panes sharpening up some of the shadows all of that kind of stuff so this was quite difficult for me because I, I don't paint landscapes very often uh, at least not for quite a few years I really don't use watercolors very much at all uh, so this was a bit of a challenge um, but I really enjoyed it and I, I can see myself taking this out with me on walks in the countryside and, and just you know sitting down for 20 minutes and doing quick little watercolor sketches with these paints I think they lend themselves really really well to particularly UK weather and I don't know if you can see but just in the doorway just given the, the small indication that there might be a person standing there as well you know, just to add a little bit of creepiness that's about that time of the video where I remind you to uh, subscribe if you haven't already and drop a like and a comment below either about the, the piece or scrawler box or blind manor uh, I'm always interested in what other people think. Uh, quickly realised I actually didn't need to add the details to those plants at all. It wasn't going to do anything, but I did want to add a few branches in the background. Yeah, very Bob Ross happy little accidents here. Not really planning anything out, just, just scribbling really, just to, to add a few more details. The other thing I noticed with these paints is that when they dry, they have that uh, kind of sheen, almost iridescent sheen that, that graphite has, that kind of very small glitter look, which catches the light really nicely. And that's the piece finished, all done. Uh, trying to show those glittery specks, but you can't quite see them here, I don't think. But there we are. Bly Manor uh, and that's all painted with just these supplies so I really hope you enjoyed the video and until next time goodbye <laughs>